outdoor jackets have long claimed to be waterproof, or rather those who make them claim that they're waterproof. Of course, the jackets themselves do not make claims, and many have for some decades now claimed to be breathable. This is not a scam. Truthfully, some modern fabrics are deeply impressive. Why is this important? Some of us need an outer jacket to achieve three things. One, to keep rain, or more likely for me, snow, out. Two, to stop the wind. And three, to allow our own moisture out when we sweat, hard at work as we are. It's a tough requirement to allow water to move in one direction, but not the other, all in one comfortable, durable item of lightweight clothing. I'm focusing on one thing today, a head-to-head -head of some widely available fabrics, comparing their breathability in a stress test. I'm a cold weather specialist, so I rarely get rained on, but I work hard hauling sledges, so I need to let perspiration out to keep me and my underlayers dry. Dampness in the extreme cold means death. Right, so these are the unfortunate specimens that are gonna be included in this test. And the most important thing to think about when we're going from jacket to jacket in the test is it's not really about the make or the model of the jacket, because of course, each manufacturer will incorporate different sorts of fabrics, nylons, polyesters, into the rest of the design. Really here, it's about the membranes. It's about the bits that are designed to breathe as well as they possibly can. So we'll see how that goes. The first one here is a nylon jacket. And a quick note for you all here is that most jackets are woven from either nylon or polyester. Nylon is stronger and handles the extreme cold a little better, but in its untreated form will absorb and hold on to notably more moisture than polyester. The technology in this jacket is Gore-Tex Active, a three-layer system that's softer and lighter than classic Gore-Tex or Gore-Tex Pro. It's supposed to be more breathable, but a little bit less waterproof and durable. Next, and whilst I'm not fixating on the brands and model names, which I will however list in the description, you can't avoid it with this one. This is an example of the North Face's new and very actively hyped future light fabric based jackets. They claim to leave behind the traditional membranes of most breathable waterproof wear, which uses a Teflon sheet pulled incredibly thin to create pores, and instead they use a special weave, although this nano spinning isn't actually a new idea at all. The breathability claims, amongst others, of Future Light are extraordinary. Again, I'm not going to be listing the numerical claims of the manufacturers here, as they are famously, and some might say intentionally, hard to compare, are usually in laboratory conditions without taking the rest of the jacket structure into account, and very few of them hail from independent tests. This jacket is a mixture of nylon and polyester, and the technical membrane itself is polyurethane based. Next, we have Gore-Tex's new two-layer Infinium membrane, in a departure for Gore-Tex, it's not branded as truly waterproof, just water resistant. Their key focus here is on lightweight, extreme breathability and windproofness. It's linked to their Windstopper family of products. And this is why I truly hate all the daft and ever-changing marketing words outdoor clothing companies use, as I'm still confused as to how these labels intersect in their wider range of products. Most, as their marketing teams scramble to come up with a word or two words glued together that they can trademark, usually just misspell generic, tired old words from the outdoor and sports industry. Mini rant over. This jacket has a polyester shell and is remarkably lightweight. That covers three of the key contenders, and I've at this stage excluded some of the proprietary and often rather opaquely marketed fabrics some other smaller outdoor companies sell, in most cases as they are just copying the famous brands to save on production costs. But I'm bringing in three other tops for context. The first is still technically a jacket, but it's not a hard shell. It's partially comprised from Gore-Tex Infinium like the last one, but with a back and other zones that are a more generic polyester windproof. I've included this to see how the structure of a hard shell adds or subtracts from breathability. Next is a hyper-light windproof that is in fact an untitled prototype from Adidas. It's zoned to offer more or less wind protection where it's needed, and it's of course breathable, but not waterproof. <laughs> yeah, this one was uh, nine quid. <laughs> As the well-briefed man in the video said, this is my control, a generic, Amazon-bought, urethane inner-coated polyester rain jacket. This is useful to include, and it'll highlight different behaviour, if there is any, from jackets costing hundreds of pounds with multi-million pound marketing campaigns. That rounds out the half dozen to be included here. I know some of you will be shouting, what about Event, about Pertex, and so on. Well, we're doing these this time. Always time for another video with a different focus, and I'll leave other people who get rained on a lot to test rain jackets. Right, we'll just head out for the first of them. My testing method was rather straightforward. I'll be running, not hiking or skiing, which will certainly offer us a tough breathability test. 
This time we're going to try the future light and see how that gets on. I weighed the jacket and I then ran two miles at seven minutes per mile pace in temperatures between seven to nine degrees centigrade with little to no wind and overcast conditions. Same level of hydration and the same time of day. Underneath, again, to really make the jackets work, I'm wearing a thin merino wool t-shirt. Merino breathes, but it also holds moisture, despite the headline benefit that it remains warm when it's damp. Okay, minute to finish. Once the run was over, I immediately re-weighed the jacket and the merino wool t-shirt. So I've done the immediate weigh in, and then I've done the 10 minute cool down, and then we'll go and do the final weigh. I then walk around slowly for 15 minutes to cool down. This should allow the jacket to catch up and pass outward as vapour, additional accumulated moisture into the air around me. Then I weigh both again. The jacket was finally placed onto a hanger and zipped back up, but without me as an internal source of heat or sweat. I weigh the jacket once per hour for three hours to see how the garments dry. Okay, here are the results. I'm starting with the actual measured weights all laid out for you. And yes, this graph is not at all helpful. The changes in moisture retention are too small to be clear, and really all this shows is that the cheap jacket is really heavy and the wind weave is really light. The one showing the woolen base layer is even worse. All we can really learn is that some jackets allow the shirt to dry off during the cool down walk and some force the shirt to keep getting wetter, either from me or borrowed back from the jacket's inner face. Let's look at better graphs. I've set the y-axis to show additional moisture accrual instead of jacket weight. Now we can see what's happened. Let's start with one of the jackets used for context. The cheap jacket with no breathable membrane gains more than 25 grams of water, but then in the cooling off and the drying phases does dry at a fair pace. After three hours though in a warm room, it's still holding a little water, and visually I saw this presented still as droplets on the internal urethane coating, not all of it soaked into the polyester. Next, rather disappointingly, is the Gore-Tex Active Jacket. Now, is the nylon face of the shell fighting the membrane? Hard to tell unless you test the component separately. It only dries slightly during cooldown, but then does quickly dry off once off my body. This suggests to me that the outermost part of the shell is a bottleneck to breathability. Future Light, the newest technology released in 2019 from the North Face with breathability claims two or three times better than the competition, is next. It takes on 13 grams of water, holds station during the cooldown, and then dries pretty quickly, holding only five grams after one hour. We then have the soft shell with some Gore-Tex Infinium in the front and sides. This tracks future light very roughly, but with slightly less water taken on and at roughly the same speed to dry. This is harder to analyze in comparison to that future light jacket though, where the latter performs similarly despite having more fabric available to absorb moisture. That said, the partial Infinium should do better as it's not marketed as waterproof and the back panel is a super thin polyester that moisture should shoot through with ease. The two down the bottom, the best performers, have little to separate them, but remarkably one is a proper hard shell jacket, albeit a lightweight one, and the other is an impossibly thin, single layer, non-waterproof windproof top that can barely be deemed a jacket. The 142 gram wind weave should be this good at allowing moisture to pass through, which makes the fact that the Gore-Tex Infinium jacket is closely mirroring its performance all the more impressive. Barely a few grams of water taken on, and then it's bone dry again before the first hour of drying is up. Here's the same graph with the baseline and context garments removed. It turns out expensive breathable fabrics are not all born equal. I'll talk about compromises in a moment, but first, the final graph. Let's see how the merino wool t-shirts I wore fared. The order of performance, obviously lower being better, does not mirror the results from the jacket measurements. Here, the future light jacket is trapping a lot of moisture instead of working it away from the t-shirt and promptly passing it through the membrane into the environment. The shirt gains a third of its own weight in water. Then, during the cooldown period, when the future light holds its own weight steady, the shirt underneath keeps on soaking up another 20 grams. The cheap nine pound jacket traps a little less water in the shirt, but to be fair, that's because it was so busy soaking it all up. It goes on to keep allowing the woolen shirt to soak up sweat during the cooldown time. The Gore-Tex Active performs a little better during the run, but then as the jacket sheds some moisture slowly during cooldown, it's still allowing the shirt to saturate. Two of our context garments are next. Water retention well below and therefore better than the jackets I just mentioned. The merino base shirt only gains around 30 grams in weight with each. The partial Gore-Tex Infinium tops underlayer takes on a little more weight in cooldown, but that's perhaps forgivable as it's busy drying itself out, having taken on loads more dampness than the super thin wind weave. 
Speaking of the wind weave, I did think it was interesting that a still substantial amount of moisture was trapped underneath in the shirt, given how thin the windproof top is. This leaves the Gore-Tex Infinium hard shell, and wow, the woolen t-shirt takes on around 20 grams of moisture, well under half what the Future Light managed to inflict, and substantially less than all the other jackets. It's one of only two jackets to allow the wool shirt to start to dry during the cool down 15 minutes, along with the wind weave, and it does so at a faster rate. Now, this was a brutal, possibly even cruel test. These aren't marketed as tops for fast-ish medium distance runners, but I thought it would be a good way to separate them under real moisture stress. Of course, I'm not testing the fit of each model here, or the pockets, or the outer face durability. Short of ripping out the membranes to exclude the rest of the jacket, I've done my best to test real world breathability. Here are my conclusions. The wind weave does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it really is windproof. Well done. The cheap jacket has two sleeves and a hood. It costs barely more than a pint of beer. Fine. The soft shell Gore-Tex Infinium jacket is let down by the polyester panel, but as a bad weather cycling or running top, it's not bad. As for the others, the Gore-Tex Active jacket was a disappointment, but only in terms of these results. I actually loved the feel and design of the jacket, and I was secretly hoping it would win. Is the Gore-Tex Active system just not as great as build? Maybe, or it's possible that the manufacturer has gone in big with durability on both faces, and so there's excess nylon hanging around that's holding on to moisture. But there's no overly thick or bulky feel to it, and nylon and polyester aren't that wildly different in terms of water retention that it would explain the poor performance. I'd like to retest Gore-Tex Active against the thicker Gore-Tex Classic and Gore-Tex Pro fabrics to see what's going on there. They weren't included in the test as we're interested in dry and cold weather breathability when they are targeting wet conditions. The Future Light didn't have a great showing either. Whilst it was far from the worst in terms of the shell wetting out and then drying, it acted as something of a barrier and kept letting the shirt underneath saturate with moisture even after I'd stopped running. I have a pair of Future Light trousers I use for some long cold days this winter, and whilst dampness didn't really cause an issue, I actually got cold legs in the wind despite having thermals underneath. I'm therefore on the fence about the windproofing claim too. Finally, Gore-Tex's wind-stopping, breathable fabric named Infinium. The one they admit is water resistant, not waterproof. Ideal on paper for a winter spring arctic sort of brief someone like me would issue. And no compromises or unnecessary resources focused on sheltering the occupant from torrential persistent rain when I'm not going to get rained on. The breathability is staggeringly impressive. It barely sucks up any moisture from a sweaty runner inside and it positively facilitates the drying of a woolen underlayer that it was really helping stay dry right from the start and during the exercise. Also, and again with the caveat that every jacket manufacturer will make a number of design and fabric choices once they have selected the technical membrane from Gore-Tex, Event, Pertex or whoever, it has a great feel. Substantial enough to feel like a shell, not a glorified mid-layer pretending to be outerwear. Also, fairly quiet without rustling, but not stiff and non-conforming like some full-on triple-layer shells can do. The Infinium took on less than a third of the sweat the Future Light did on the run, and then lost half of that on the cooldown when the Future Light lost none and was fully dry minutes later. It took the full three hours to air dry the Future Light. I can't attribute all that to nylon versus polyester. By the way, depending on who you ask, nylon absorbs up to a few percent and polyester absorbs just a percent or two of water by weight. The Infinium also really looked after the absorbent woolen shirt underneath, whereas the Future Light let it really wet out and kept it wetting out. This was one of so many ways I could have tested these jackets. Let me know in the comments other membranes you'd like me to look at and other real world test scenarios linked to dry, colder weather travel. I'll leave testing outerwear in drenched, humid, monsoon conditions to other YouTubers like the ones that mess around in jungles. That's it. Bye.